What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the brand new Google Pixel 8 Pro. Now, obviously, this isn't a regular Pixel phone unboxing. Our friends over at Team Pixel sent over one heck of a presentation package to emphasize the Google Pixel collection, what Google dubbed their ecosystem of hardware products, which include the phone, the Pixel Watch, and the Pixel Buds. So a big thank you and special shout out to Team Pixel for not only this, but also the delicious eight themed macarons from La Dure, which I already ate. Inside this beautiful eight themed presentation box, the first thing we get is a small stack of cards that outline some additional information on the Pixel 8 Pro. Here is the phone itself, of course, and the new porcelain colorway, which I actually think is my favorite this year. To pair up with the Pixel 8 Pro, Google also sent over the new Pixel Watch 2 with the matching porcelain active band, and we're actually going to save this guy for a separate video. Now, if you're curious what the regular Pixel unboxing experience is like, inside this drawstring bag, I do have the retail boxes that we can check out, and inside the box for the Pixel 8 Pro, you'll find the same standard issue paperwork and accessories from the last few years, including a USB-C to USB-C cable and the USB-A to USB-C dongle adapter, but unfortunately no wall plug for charging. For the Pixel Watch 2, this is a pretty funky box with some hidden compartments. The left flap has the dedicated charging puck along with some additional instructions and documents, and on the right you have your larger band size that you can swap out if you need to. With all that stuff out of the way, here is the new Google Pixel 8 Pro once again. And first things first, let's talk pricing, because there are some changes worth noting there. Google did increase the prices for both the regular Pixel 8, which now starts at $699, and the Pixel 8 Pro, which now starts at $999. And they both have totally different color options. The regular Pixel 8 comes in obsidian black, hazel gray, and rose, which is sort of a lightish pink. And the Pixel 8 Pro is available in beige blue, obsidian black, and this porcelain, kind of a gray off-white shade. For the launch of the new phones, Google is continuing to offer a ton of great trade-in deals and special bonuses. And if you want to take advantage of one of those deals, I'll leave some links down below in the video description. So on the surface, the new Pixel 8 Pro certainly mimics what we saw on last year's phone. The Pro is once again a pretty good sized 6.7 inch smartphone. That's the screen size corner to corner. And we get that familiar center hole punch selfie camera up top, pretty thin black borders down the sides and across the bottom, and a screen to body ratio of some 87%. The phone has a nice flat display, no curved glass, and it feels nearly the same in the hand as last year. It is one whole gram heavier though, but besides that, if you enjoyed using last year's phone, this is physically nearly the same. Around back, Google did go with a slightly different fit and finish. The Gorilla Glass Victus 2 is now a smooth, soft matte, which I really like. The sides and edges, are a shiny polished aluminum, which completes the very premium vibe. The only other thing worth noting is this phone still has the camera bar or bump, whatever you want to call it. It's very obvious, it may even be a little bigger this year, but honestly, this whole design is what makes Google's Pixel smartphones so recognizable. And compared to some other camera bulges, this to me is a design choice that actually makes a bunch of sense. Taking a quick look around at everything else, on the left side, Google did keep the physical SIM card tray, which I appreciate, though eSIM is also supported, of course. On the right, the same old power and volume buttons, nothing really up top aside from, I believe, a network antenna and a microphone hole. Across the bottom, large mic and speaker cutouts flanking the USB-C port in the center for charging, secondary speaker hidden up at the top above the selfie camera, and around back, three camera lenses, the LED flash, and something totally new, a temperature sensor. Now, Google opted for the in-display fingerprint sensor once again on the 8 Pro, and I know in years past, this was a little inconsistent and finicky, but I think especially last year and seemingly this year, the fingerprint setup to me feels much better. It's quick, it's accurate, it's no longer an issue. Google Google also, for the first time, enhanced their face unlock and facial recognition features, so now in addition to getting into the phone, you can also use your face for app unlocks and purchases. And this is very interesting because they're actually not using any special sensors or other biometric hardware. It's still just the selfie camera and software that would recognize your face. But supposedly, it meets Android's biometric class 3 requirements, so it'll be interesting to see just how secure the new face unlock feature is as more people test it out. 
The display, specifically on the Pixel 8 Pro this year, has also been improved. It's a similar LTPO OLED panel from last year, 6.7 inches, like I said already, 1344 by 2992 resolution for about 489 pixels per inch. It's a 120 hertz variable refresh rate display, but most importantly, and this is the improvement, it's now much brighter. 2400 nits of peak auto brightness for outdoor viewing, 1600 nits maximum user controlled brightness. Google is dubbing this their Super Actua display, and max brightness is specifically what they're after here. They even advertise the phone as having a crisp, clear view in direct sunlight. Now, from my own experience living here in Las Vegas, seeing a phone's display on a bright sunny day is always challenging. And especially if the phone starts to get warm, the extra auto brightness doesn't tend to stick around for very long. So I'm really interested to see how the Super Actua display actually performs especially compared to, say, the iPhone, which got a super bright display last year, but almost never is actually at its max brightness because of how warm it gets. Besides the upgraded brightness, though, most everything else with the viewing experience is similar to last year. The 8 Pro has that QHD resolution, so it's super sharp even at this big size. The OLED panel is colorful and punchy and looks really great, and the adaptive 120Hz refresh rate makes the phone feel super fast, but it hopefully won't be sucking down all that battery life as it transitions to the lower refresh rate in certain instances when necessary. All in all, I still think Google's Pro phones, like the Pixel 8 Pro, have a great display setup from start to finish. When it comes to the specs and internals, Google introduced their new Tensor G3 chip to the Pixels this year. And for the Pixel 8 Pro, we now get 12 gigs of RAM standard. Now, Google didn't spend too much time touting speed improvements when they announced this phone, but rather better power efficiency under loads. And I think this is an interesting and very welcome sort of adjustment to their performance goals. I think it's widely known that previous Pixel devices have gotten a little warm and worked up when pushed hard. So Google focusing on that might just be the best option. Also, I'm interested to see perhaps better battery life as the phone learns my daily usage patterns and hopefully better optimizes and adjusts that way as well. But I should mention that the new processor can do more as well. Its machine learning TPU is the key to features like best take and magic eraser and the camera app and text to speech. So theoretically, those tasks and countless others should be faster and better as well. But obviously, all of this will be put to the test in the coming weeks as I start to use the phone. The other thing to note, of course, is Google's commitment to software updates. Now, Pixel devices have always been first with the new versions of Android and generally had a longer support lifespan. But for the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro, Google is now promising an astonishingly long seven years of major Android updates, security patches, and new software features. That could mean the Pixel 8 Pro will continue to feel new or at least current until the year 2030. Now, all of this is great in theory, but it's up to Google to actually follow through with this promise, and I hope they do. I actually think this would encourage more people to opt for a Pixel phone if they know their potentially $1,000 investment will pay dividends for years to come. As far as battery life and charging speeds, the actual battery size is only a tiny bit bigger than last year's phone, 5,050 milliamps versus an even 5,000 on the Pixel 7 Pro. But size is sort of irrelevant in this case. It's all gonna be about how the new Tensor G3 chip and Android 14 optimize battery usage throughout the day. Now, Google did technically increase the max charging speeds on this phone as well, 30 watt wired support now with the same 23 watt wireless and reverse wireless charging options for other devices devices, but with no wall plug included, you'll have to go out and make sure you're getting the proper fast charging accessories yourself. Last but not least, while Google didn't change the camera hardware too significantly on the Pixel 8 Pro this year, there are of course various camera improvements. We once again get a 50 megapixel main lens, 48 megapixel telephoto lens with five times optical zoom. The ultra wide did actually change. It's now a 48 megapixel lens as well. And the selfie camera technically is different, but not by much. It's a 10.5 megapixel shooter with a slightly shorter focal length. So what is new? Well, 
autofocus for selfies for the best selfies ever on a Pixel device, brighter, better looking shots from the ultra wide lens and improved macro focus, more detailed zoomed in shots, even with digital zoom, and faster, better optimized shooting and image processing, like with Best Take and Magic Eraser, as I mentioned earlier. What's sort of interesting is that Google actually announced some camera features and other software features actually that were coming soon, like the video boost with Night Sight and some other AI and software additions that'll hit the Pixel in the coming months. Of course, I'm more interested in how the Pixel shoots right now, and I'll have plenty of camera comparisons coming soon to the channel, but I fully suspect the Pixel 8 Pro to be one of, if not the best smartphone camera once again this year. Overall, I consider the Pixel 8 Pro to really be a continuation of what Google did last year and what they also needed to work on. Namely, hopefully, a better optimized device that runs cooler and smoother and more efficiently, rather than attempting to max out the speeds when very few people notice the speed difference year over year anyway. On top of that, I'm really interested to see just how bright its bright display is in practice. But what do you guys think? Will the Pixel 8 Pro be your next device? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.